Hey guys, last time I gave you a nice showcase of my go-to dashboard. In case you don't remember, here it is. In that video, I gave you nice details of what all the pages were. This video is going to be about where the data comes from. I've got two main data sets. One is my resource profile that gives me all my curves. And a second file gives me all my schedule information. With that, let's just dive right into it. And as you can see, two Excel files. Boom, right here. This is my schedule import file that goes into my dashboard. You'll notice that this is just a flat Excel file. I'm not using an XCR. I'm not using any transformation of data. I just have a list of schedule activities. I've got some resource information, current forecast finish dates, last week, last month, whatever your prior update is, start date, finish date, and whatever your baseline is, start date, finish date, our level one, two, three, the BPS structure, and your activity description. Pretty standard information. I'm actually generating all this information from three tabs. You can go into your baseline, copy, paste, there you go, prior, same deal, current. This is really where you go into your current schedule and after you finish your update, copy, paste. Couple notes on formats. When you do import this, I'm not doing any transformations in Power BI, none, none that are really significant for this. You get information out of P6 that says dash A. Obviously, if you even use an XCR, you don't need to worry about it but I'm just doing copy and paste directly out of the activities view. And you will get information that looks like that. It doesn't work very good. So a little hack, just do a replace. This will replace all your asterisks. Little tilde, asterisk, tilde, replace all. There you go. Nice thing is Excel knows that that's a date. Same thing with our, with our A's. There we go. And I do this every time. It's a little manual step, but sometimes you'll notice that if you do something in Excel, you save about 50 hours of frustration in Power BI in your databases. So yeah, just make sure it's nice in Excel and you're good to go. Here, obviously, I'm just doing lookups to those three tabs. Some Activities might be inserted into your schedule, and if they are, they will not show up in your baseline, and that is what, exactly what we want to look for. Or not look for, but it's, you know, we, we want to see blank, since that's our little key that now won't show up. It still gets imported into Power BI, no problem with that. Um, one of the little tags I've done is this change in percent completes. Again, you can do this in Power BI. Sometimes it's just easier to do something in Excel. And if I got a change in my percent complete, it doesn't make a difference if it goes up or if it goes down. If there's just a change, uh, I'll say active, because that means there is a change. Otherwise I say no change. And that just gives me a little key when I bring it into Power BI. Simple, flat files, not dealing with XCRs, not dealing with databases, formats good easy as, and that's what you want to look for. Resources. This information is from, again, looking into Primavera, looking at my resource assignments. This is just going into remaining early units, and we can see that this is all the to-go activities, to-go man hours. Obviously, you'd be missing some actual to-dates, I've got those in another file called Actuals. I've also got a couple other tabs for Target, Plan, Late, Plan. These are all generated in exactly the same way, going in resource assignments from your baseline schedule, and copy, paste. And here, you do want to make sure that this is a curve going from 0 to 100%. If you don't have activities have started, it's easy. If you do have some activities where there's actuals to date sitting in your baseline, you want to make sure that you go and actually insert uh, a prior actual so that you do have a, a profile that goes from 0 to 100. If something's not in your data, it won't come across in Power BI. 
Instead of saying remaining early units, I've just called this plan. You will see that I use this key, this data field in, uh, in Power BI when we actually deal with this on the data side. In the Excel file, I just have called this plan, plan late. Well, I just call it plan late. This would be using remaining late units from your research assignments. Target, this is just a, a cut from any particular schedule you might want to call target. Same ideas, they'll just be remaining early if you want to target early, remaining late, and you will have to insert actuals to date. Now, actuals to date, a little bit difficult because Primavera does not capture actuals very well. So I've actually had to manually capture every week what the actual units are for each activity. There's a couple different ways to do this. You could actually capture the percent complete and the forecast units. You actually probably have to have two different tabs because every week might have a, well, you would need a forecast units every week. Here, I just do the calculation where I'm just pulling in the earned units every period. Current week, well, that's just gonna be a lookup going into my forecast saying what my current earned is for that activity and then subtracting off what my prior earned is and I just get an incremental. Every week I'll just copy these, copy these as values and then move the formulas over to the next week and call this data series actual. It's a pretty simple setup and it works quite well. When we look at how it, in Power BI, what it looks like. So I've actually bring in every tab from the files. The schedule, I'm only bringing in just the, the flat file with very little transformation. With the progress information, all the progress information, I do need to unpivot and I need to change the week date in the Excel file. Primavera gives us the week beginning date in this database, or you want the week ending date, that's usually your key. So I gotta add six to everything, as well as doing a unpivot action, where I'm gonna say this is my series field, this is my week ending, that's my earned units for that particular week ending period. Do that with each one of the tables, and then I bring them all together as a progress all. This is where you have a combined data set with all the fields that you import. And this is really your, your data layer that you're dealing with. With anything in, if you do a SQL Server database, this is really what you want it to look like. Um, how you get it, you can get there a couple different ways. You could actually have your WBS structure sitting somewhere else, just keyed off of your activity. Yeah, a couple different ways to do it. But this is what you want to end up with. And if you do end up with a progress file, looks like that and a schedule file that looks like this, you can then drive everything in your dashboard and that will be the next video. Thanks a lot guys and hopefully the next one comes out good. Thanks.